Welcome to part two of 3D and After Effects. So in this lesson, we're going to get lights to interact with objects using material options and 3D shadows. So in lesson one, we created this simple scene. Um, we've got a floor object and we have a wall and we have a light, a spotlight in this case. I'm just going to go back to the active camera and I'm going to drag and drop this PNG image. So a PNG image is basically um, an image that has uh, the transparency already applied. It has uh, additional transparency information. I'm just going to scale this down slightly. As you can see right now, it's a 2D layer and it's unaffected by the spotlight. So I'm going to check the cube to make it a 3D layer. And now it's being uh, affected by the spotlight. So we have a few material options down here. I'm just going to open this up. If we don't want the spotlight affecting this layer, we can turn off accept lights. And as you can see now, uh, the spotlight's been excluded. If I just turn this back on, the spotlight is affecting this layer. So if you choose to leave uh, accept lights on, we have a few options to control the lighting. So we have ambience, which is like uh, pretty much like brightness and contrast in this case. It just affects the whole layer evenly. Uh, we have diffuse. Diffuse is like ambient, except um, the difference between uh, ambient and diffuse is diffuse light is dependent on the direction of the rays. So um, basically the position of the spotlight will affect the results we get from this uh, diffuse control. So as you can see, because the spotlight is kind of uh, to the right slightly, um, these areas are slightly lighter than these areas here. I'm just going to turn this up. As you can see, this area is much brighter because the spotlight is um, closer to this area here. Uh, we have specular intensity, which is pretty much uh, effectively the highlight. It uh, seems to affect the edges along here a bit more than everywhere else. Specular shininess is pretty much uh, the width of the specular highlight. I'm just going to turn this up, and as you can see, we can kind of uh, focus the highlight a bit more around here. Get a nice kind of uh, backlight effect. And then finally, this metal control just gives you that additional uh, control over the specular highlight. So I'm just going to turn this down slightly. So I'm just going to move this image down slightly. And as you can see, it doesn't look very 3D. Um, it's not exactly making perfect contact with the ground. So in some cases, to kind of disguise this, you might want to use 3D shadows. And to turn on shadows, we have to turn on two values. So I'm just going to go to the light settings first. I'm going to click on the light and go to layer light settings. So I'm just going to turn on cast shadows and hit OK. Uh, next, we have to go to the uh, PNG layer. I'm just going to open it up, go to material options. And I have to turn on cast shadows here as well. So I'm just going to flick that. And as you can see, we have this uh, shadow cast here, which just makes it look a bit more kind of integrated with the scene. So I'm just going to go back to the light settings, click on the light, go to layer light settings, and we have a few shadow options. Uh, very simply, we have the darkness, uh, basically a value between zero and 100%. Might want to reduce that. But in this case, I'm trying to disguise the fact that this wheel isn't touching the ground. So I'm just going to turn that up to uh, 100. And we have shadow diffusion, which is pretty much uh, blurriness. As you can see, um, the distance does matter in this case. Um, this area here next to the spoiler is uh, blurrier than this area next to the wheel. So it does take into account uh, distance when it's calculating uh, shadow diffusion. So that's a quick introduction to material options and 3D shadows. Join me in part three for more 3D and After Effects. Uh, if you found this useful, please share it. And thanks for watching.